Jane Wogan and welcome to The Sherlock Show. We have another fab show for you today with fashion, beauty, food and chat. Something for everyone. But first up, it's a chat with the team. We're discussing everything from the best dressed celeb of the week to our favourite beauty products. You won't want to miss it. Polly is sharing her week in outfits from date night to dog walks. She has you covered for every eventuality with some serious style inspiration. Adiola is sharing her top picks from a beauty brand we all love. And finally, I'm interviewing Giselle Lapomp Moore, an expert in manifestation who will teach us how to get exactly the life we want with her clever approach. But first, it's chat with Adiola, Sherry, and Laura. Welcome, ladies. Hi. 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 <laughs> okay, so first things first, the much talked about royal trip to the Caribbean. Do you guys say Caribbean or Caribbean? I'd say oh, Caribbean. Yeah, I'd say Caribbean. 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 Yeah. I used to say Caribbean, Caribbean sounds. More exotic. More exotic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where do I, go? I think as I lived in the States, I started saying Caribbean, which I'm, I'm sticking to Caribbean. <laughs> it, so she looked stunning. She did. Uh, every single day. Uh, do we have top picks? Oh, yes. Yeah, you go yeah. I thought she looked amazing. Every outfit, I was like, oh, wow, like really excited to see what she was going to wear. I loved her in the pink Vampire's Wife dress. Yeah, yes, so, so long. Yeah, mm, yeah she looked great, didn't yeah, she? Yeah, I love the sh little shoulder ruffle. Yeah. So glamorous. Just very, almost like she was going to like an award ceremony, like yeah. the Oscars or something. I think I it was like, her Yeah, gosh. she's really like, I don't know, she just, she just kind of looks better, doesn't she? As she's yeah, getting she older. Got, she I feel just like she's, mm -hmm. she's gone, it's my time to shine, mm. I think, of anything. She's uh, a bit more relaxed. Yeah. Mm. I think yeah. that's it, you're more right. Relaxed. She's mm -hmm. relaxing yeah. into it. And yeah, yeah, I thought she looked amazing. I, I mean, I thought, like I do, she has an amazing body mm. that she doesn't really always show off. Mm. And I thought in the Alexandra Rich dress. Totally. Yeah. With the pet pen. Oh, yeah, stunning. stunning. I thought she looked beautiful, yeah. so fashion forward. Yeah, yeah. and really, she had cool shoes. She had the, do you see the Gianvito Rossi white? Stiletto. Cool. I don't know. Yeah, she looked like modern. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, and that was actually the the dress I thought reminded me most of Princess Diana. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. I don't know why. I feel like I've seen her in something. Yeah, before. The but she's managing to be a bit more fashion forward, but still kind of appropriate. Yeah, mm -hmm. at the same time. which is tough to. And also because she's always going to be questioned about how much everything costs. So I do, but I, so I do think she usually handles that quite well. Yeah, well, she wore the Rixo as yeah. well, didn't she? The pink, yeah. which was um, nice yeah, a like nice affordable mix. Affordable and then high end. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah, I really loved her Jenny Peckham outfit yeah. when yeah. she first arrived at Belize, and it was just so beautiful. The colour, I just mm -hmm. felt like yeah. it just really kind of reminded me of summer, like a new season, yeah. like the blue. I feel that's really in it. This season, so that was really, really beautiful. I always think, maybe it's just because of me, I, I always think, God, I wonder does Kate want to do Botox and stuff? Yeah. <laughs> and, and she, I mean, she must. I mean, she's 40 now. Yeah, she looks right. Really she looks amazing. fantastic. She does. And her hair, she's got great hair. Gorgeous hair. And teeth. Mm -hmm. But I wonder, I mean, has she had a few tweaks? Mm. Well, whoever has well, done it, they're good. Can't see it because it must be good. Yeah, I was going to say, it's good on her if she has. Exactly. That's why. <laughs> So now it was the SL Beauty Awards this week. Do you guys have, which there was some amazing products. Do you guys have a favorite? Adiola, what was your, the, the go-to woman for, <laughs> for beauty products? What was you know your favorite? What? It was such a good roundup because everything in each category were things that I would love. Mm -hmm. I love SkinCeutical CD Ferulic. I feel like it's one of the best antioxidant serums and that was great. Yeah. Um, so that was one of my favorites. Oh, which one? The, yes. Yes, C I've Ferulic. Used that. Yes. So good. Is that how you say it? Yeah, C Ferulic. Oh, <laughs> that's so, so good. So, so good. Yeah, one of my favorite products ever. Yeah, so there were so many great like picks in there. It caused CC cream. Yeah. Yeah, there were so many. I think yeah. the uh, it, co it Cosmetic CC cream is great. It's oh so cost gosh. effective, I so think. Cost you can use it as a concealer, yeah. as a way to like even out your skin. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's fantastic. I always use it when I'm away because mm -hmm. I think it gives me coverage, but I still don't feel I'm wearing foundation. Yeah. I yes. am wearing foundation yeah. <laughs> every day. And then there was, I believe, Laura, you like the Armani foundation, yeah, which I love Armani foundation. Yeah, I know it's been a cult and I've got friends that have used it for years, but I'm actually, I, I've only recently started using it. And yeah. I get it now. It makes, yeah. it makes sense. <laughs> it's one of those things you always come back to. Yeah, I think. yeah. yeah. so yeah. good. I always try the other stuff, and then mm. it's uh, again, it's always my go-to, and it's so silky. Yeah, and the, co the coverage is great. It's, a it's, massive... it's not too heavy and cakey. Yeah, it's so light. Which, yeah, exactly. Mm. It's it's so so Although no problem with the heavy and cakey. <laughs> 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 I do put a lot of it on myself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cherry, what what was your favorite? 
So I really was surprised, not surprised, well, pleasantly surprised that Ultrasun won the best yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, brand one. for um, sun cream. I love Ultrasun, it's so good. My sister, who's like 45, has used mm -hmm. Factor 50 on her face every single day oh, for like 30 I'm years. still looks so young. Doesn't have a single wrinkle. Oh. Yeah. So that for me is proof that it actually works. So she yeah. wears Ultrasun, does she, throughout the year? Yeah, even if she doesn't leave the house. Yeah, yeah, she's like a big OG yeah, that's SPF. That's my top tip. SPF yeah, every, every day. day. Okay. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I use it every day, always, and in the summer, of course, but I never <laughs> just don't put it anywhere else. That's yeah. Okay, I need to get on that. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. And I think you only can apply it once a day in the morning, mm. whereas other ones you have to keep reapplying. Mm. So it's a good, yeah. really long wearing one. And now, it, for me, because I always struggle because I have naturally curly hair, so the Dyson. Curler, I think it was called yeah, the, the air wrap. The air wrap yeah. I won, and I've been hinting at that for the longest time for my entire yeah. family. But <laughs> hopefully, they're watching. No, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, they're watching. Turn the volume up. I mean, literally, it's like Christmas, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, nothing, yeah. nothing. <laughs> so now there's been a, there's a bunch of shows, as per usual, it's always on Netflix, but uh, that we've been binging in our free time. What have you been watching, Cherie? Well, I think we have to talk about Bridgerton, we do, we which do. came out last weekend. I've only seen the few, first few episodes, but it's just such easy viewing. I'm like, okay, good. Yeah, I, I really haven't recommend started, it. but I loved the first so series good. so much, and I was hearing quite mixed reviews. Yeah. But it's still easy viewing. Isn't Very it? Nice. easy viewing. Yeah, the costumes are amazing. Escapism. Exactly. Yeah. I love the music. Like, where else can you hear? Yes, I love the soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> yes, so, so good. Exactly. But Drink don't, water. Didn't you miss the Duke though? I quite miss him. Yeah. I did. I think that's what everyone's missing out on. <laughs> I, yeah. Maybe, yeah. And they have, I mean, so she continues to be in the series. Mm -hmm. I guess he left. He didn't want to be part of series two. But it's a shame mm. because no matter what, I don't think any other man was as handsome yeah. <laughs> as he is. And the love interest in this one, I don't want to give anything away. Yeah. The love interest just doesn't have that. Edge. Edge. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> did he leave on a high? The female yeah. lead, like, I, I mm. unfortunately I forget the actress's name. She's beautiful yeah. and yeah. Um, and you know so it's she's lovely to look at. But yeah, I still I, I watched the whole entire thing, so I won't say anything. But uh, I was I really did miss him. I thought maybe yeah. he'll come at some stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a hottie. What can I say? Also, you w were watching Bad Vegan, which to me I don't know if you guys have seen it. Is I love crazy. That. Yes. What's that? So good. So Bad Vegan, it's like a true crime documentary about this. Um, woman, a restaurateur, and she had a vegan, really successful vegan restaurant in New York for mm -hmm. years. And then she ends up getting with this guy who's a very dodgy character, kind of like catfished her in a way, okay. said that he was like this special ops guy, he had all this money, and yeah. he didn't. And mm -hmm. it ends up turning it, without spoiling it, it ends up turning into this very dramatic, like cat and mouse chase where she owes yeah. um, her company and like the government a lot of money. Wow and um, essentially gets arrested. Is it a series? <coughs> yeah. yeah. I think it's four episodes it's on Netflix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it, a part of it, you do kind of go after episode two, come on, what's wrong with her? Yeah. yeah. Okay. But she dodged every single question that they asked her. But it was just really weird because like he promised her all these different things. Like she has this be beloved dog and like yeah. he says he's going to make the dog immortal. Like me. <laughs> yeah, bizarre. <laughs> so bizarre. <laughs> she gave so him, and then she gave like nearly two million dollars. Yeah. Wow, but what yeah. I liked, which I thought was interesting, after all, like the Alec Baldwin and Ilaria El scandal of her saying she was Spanish when she wasn't, was that's where he met Ilaria. Was it's called yeah. pure, pure Food and Wine? Yeah, that's why. So yeah. that's where he met her. But he was initially chasing the woman that owned the yeah, restaurant, Sama. Mm -hmm. and she yeah. and she speaks about that in the the show. But what she doesn't say is that he didn't just meet Ilaria that night in the restaurant. She called Ilaria and said, Alec Baldwin is here. And Ilaria came. Oh, and okay. that's how they yeah. met. But, uh, I, I, but then she said, after, remember when she said, God, what did I do? I kind of like gave yeah. up Alec Baldwin. I should have regretted it. Yeah. <laughs> she sort of regretted that's how it. she said that she met the guy on Twitter was that he used to tweet Alec Baldwin yeah. and have like some sort of like relationship. Mm -hmm. So it was really awkward. And then she kind of like gave I up know. Alec Baldwin for this weird guy yeah. <laughs> that she met. Yeah, and I mean, strange. looks aren't everything I know, but she was, she's a pretty girl. Yeah. And I mean, he was yeah. not attractive. And then he said that he, <laughs> he started putting on more and more weight. And yeah. he said he was supposed to make himself grotesque to her. 
Because as a test for her to be like, yeah. I will know that you want me because oh, wow. I'm yeah. getting all this weight and you're still here. Oh, yeah. such a, yeah. it was very strange. Yeah. Big yeah. like Tinder Swindler vibes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you've seen that, then you're like Anna, this. Tinder Swindler, okay. you're going to like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did. I preferred Tinder, Tinder Swindler though. Yeah. Yeah. Bad vegan I drama. I began to not really like her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thought, right? The, yeah, she wasn't, I wasn't warming to her. Yeah. Agreed. Any other shows? We're not asking Laura because <laughs> her kids are, her kids are too young and she doesn't have time. <laughs> <laughs> and my list is getting longer. I've got a lot to catch up on. <laughs> Are you, Adiola, is there anything you're the watching right one. now? Yeah, yeah, Bad Vegan. Oh, right, okay. It. it is quite good. It's an easy watch as well. Um, <laughs> I, was just, I was just stunned the whole way through. And then just the ending, like how they actually got found was actually quite funny. Yeah, I know. With the, by <laughs> ordering pizza. By ordering a Domino's pizza, that's how they got discovered. In like the worst, that place yeah. in America. I, yeah. it's some, I forget where they Crazy. said it was. I never want to go. <laughs> <laughs> Ever. Yeah, so basically we have no life when we're watching Netflix all the time. That's, that's pretty much it. I did finish Bridgerton in a night. Wow. And it was oh, wow. Saturday, and it was Saturday that's night. That's a binge watch. Okay, fine. Yeah. That's what I need to do. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Pleasure as always. Next up, our very own gorgeous Polly Sayer is showing us what she wears in a week. Stay tuned. Hello, guys. I'm Polly. She likes as fashion broadcaster, and I'm here with Edith Smart to talk you through my week in outfits. <laughs> Right, so this is Monday's outfit. Um, Mondays for me are actually a work from home day. I typically do quite a lot of like admin and stuff on Monday, not loads kind of happens in terms of me going out. So I just tend to live in a variation on a tracksuit when I'm at home. Um, so I'm wearing a hoodie by Anina Bing and some extremely ancient Topshop joggers, which are super comfy. If I'm heading out, maybe to do some grocery shopping, sometimes I get my nails done on a Monday. I'll chuck on this bomber jacket, which I got from Loot Vintage in Covent Garden. It's a real find actually, I think. I love a bomber right now. It's, you know, a good transitional jacket. Um, chuck on some high top trainers. Usually these are Nike Air Jordan ones. Um, they're super comfortable. Let's talk about Tuesday next. I am gonna go for something a little smarter. With this a jacket, a white tee, some split hem leggings. We'll grab the shoes in a minute and maybe my trench. Okay, so Tuesdays are an um, office day for me, so I've gone for something a little bit smarter this time. Uh, I've gone for a denim shirt, which is from Warehouse, um, a white t-shirt underneath from the Frankie shop. I quite like a structured shoulder, and this t-shirt is one of their padded shoulder ones, so it just gives this outfit a little bit of extra drama, I think, a bit of extra structure, which I really like. My bottom half, I'm gonna go for a pair of split hem leggings, which are from Zara. I just think the split hem adds a bit of interest to the look, and they're super comfortable, as well as looking nice. I've added some white flats, which are from Naeus. These are really comfortable. I love the square toe and that slightly higher vamp. Just again, it's a bit more interest to the look. To finish things off, I am going to add a trench, which is obviously the spring jacket. And this one is from Gap. So I'm just gonna pull the sleeves up slightly, roll the denim shirt sleeve up. Um, so I've just rolled the sleeves up. You can see a bit of jewellery. You can see my necklace is just poking through there. Um, I just like this layered look. It's kind of easy, simple. It's still comfortable, but it feels like I've made a bit of an effort, which is all important. All right, let's think about what I'm going to wear on Wednesday now. This. Great. All right, I'm going to go and try these on and come back. So this is Wednesday. Wednesday is another working for myself day and I quite often go to events or do some shooting. So I want something comfortable, um, but that still looks cool. So I have gone for a pair of linen paper bag waist trousers from Posse, which is an Australian brand. I can't wait to wear these to death in the summer. Um, I've gone for a nice gray ribbed tank from Anina Bing, which is so comfortable. Um, and then just a nice, green quilted jacket, which is by Free People. It's a really great sort of spring transitional jacket that is great this time of year. And then I just completed the look with my favorite divisive uh, Marmite Chanel sandals. Um, I personally love them and I think they give, I don't know, 
a certain something to every look. Then just a bit of gold jewelry, which I wear every day without fail. Um, a Monica Vinader necklace and an Alighieri pendant and some earrings from Pie London. I don't tend to deviate too much from these pieces because they go with everything. All right, let's talk about Thursday next. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for this little slip skirt, another tank, and my favorite, most worn blazer. Okay, gonna try these on and I'll come back in a moment. Okay, here is Thursday's outfit. Thursdays are an office day for me, but quite often after work I might go for drinks with the girls. I might also be on the show, so nice to dress up a little bit. So I have gone for my all-time favorite black blazer from Totem. I probably wear this like at least once or twice a week, um, usually. That's just, it goes with everything, it's the perfect shape. I've gone for a black, sort of washed black tank from Sunder Bay, who do the best tank tops, in my opinion. Um, a nice sort of split slip skirt from Warehouse and some strappy heels from S and Label. I also think this is quite a nice one if you're going for a date, you know, going out for dinner with my husband after work, then this is a nice one to go for. It's kind of my way to do dressing up. Friday, is a bit more chill. So I'm actually gonna go for something slightly more jazzy. Um, so we'll try this on and come back to you in a moment. All right, so this is Friday's outfit. Fridays typically involve kind of dinner at home, maybe have some friends around for a little dinner drinks thing. So I like to wear something, again, comfortable, but still makes an effort. So I've gone for this matching kimono style two piece, which is from Posse, again. Um, I just love the color, I love the print. It feels quite spring like summer like I think this will be, you know, it's kind of a holiday piece to throw on for the beach, but I'm loving it with a pair of white by far heels just to dress it up a little bit. I think because, you know, it's matching, it's got the print going on, it still feels a bit elevated, but actually it's elasticated waist, it's pretty oversized, kimono style. It's just very easy to throw on. Okay, let's think about Saturday's look. I'm gonna go for some zebra print jeans, which I love, a sweatshirt, and I think my trench again. All right, let's go put this on. And this is Saturday. Saturdays usually involve brunch out, a dog walk, um, just general relaxing eating. So I want something kind of comfortable again, um, but also look, looks cool and it's practical. Uh, so I've gone for these zebra print jeans. So comfy, but I love that a bit of print just injects a bit of fun into the outfit. It makes it feel a bit interesting. Uh, these are from Zara. Um, I've gone for a, another sweatshirt, a Nina Bing special. Um, the same trench coat from Gap as before. And then just my Nike Jordans again, because they really are the comfiest shoes I own. So perfect for dog walking in. Um, a bit of gold jewelry again, and just to complete the look. My favorite warehouse sunnies. I think this pair of sunnies really makes any outfit look a bit more expensive. So I absolutely love them. And they're cheap as chips, so even better. Okay, Sunday, last day of the week, something chill, something relaxed. I'm gonna go for some more sweats, probably. Let's be real. All right, this is a final look of the week for Sunday. Um, obviously, Sunday involves a lot of relaxing, chilling, kind of similar to Saturday, but probably just times two. So a lot of eating, a lot of dog walking. Um, so I don't tend to dress up too much for Sunday. Um, I've gone for this Rotate Sunday um, sweatshirt. I don't only wear this on Sundays, but I thought it was quite apt. Um, with some American vintage joggers and my Chanel sandals. Again, I might switch this out for trainers if it's wet, but I quite like the way this looks. That old sandwich dressing rule that's going on again. A bit of jewelry again, just to kind of elevate things. If you're wearing a tracksuit especially, I think it's quite nice to go for some earrings and some necklaces just to make it feel a bit more polished. Um, if I'm heading outside, I would just add a denim jacket. This one is from Free People. It's just easy, comfortable, optimum word, and something I could just wear out to the pub or for a dog walk um, and look cool at the same time. That is my week in outfits. I hope you enjoyed this and it's given you some inspo. Do let me know if you have any favorites from the week and I will see you next time.
Thanks so much, Polly. I loved your Friday night at home look in particular, super glam. Now, if you're like me, MAC has always been one of your firm beauty favorites, but the brand has so many untapped gems and who better to talk us through them than the queen of beauty, Adiola. <laughs> so, Adiola, yes. no pressure, <laughs> but what is your top? pick oh my gosh. for MAC right now. There's so many, but I must say I do love it. The, the new mascara. It's the MAC Stack Mascara. Yeah. I have it here. I love it so much. And it's just a fantastic way to give you that definition and the volume, but you can go in with as many layers as you want. It doesn't clunk. It doesn't clunk up? Yeah. Okay. It's just one of those fantastic bristles, if you can see here. Yeah. It's that sort of comb applicator, so it defines the lashes, yeah. but you can go back in and reapply. And just the volume and the length, I have no lashes whatsoever, but with this mascara, mm -hmm. I definitely get that. And I just love it, and it's just such an iconic It's very pretty as well, isn't it? As well, yeah. Now, you said there's two brushes with this? Yeah, so this is the Max Stack, which is the mega okay. brush volume, but there's also got a second one, which is the micro brush. So if you do have quite a lot of like length in your lashes anyway, or your lashes are quite long, yeah. go with that one, because it's really good to give you separation um, and definition. Is and it it's expensive? Also great. Um, I don't think so, roughly. I mean, the price-wise is actually really, really affordable, so it's really, really good. Thank you, Adiola. Uh, so take a look at the other picks Adiola has from MAC. Hey guys, Adela Boyega here, beauty contributor for Sheer Lux. Now, today's video is extra special because I'm gonna be talking about one of my favorite makeup brands, MAC Cosmetics. I'm also gonna be showcasing a really beautiful spring makeup look as well as showing you their brand new MAC Stack Mascara. First thing I'm gonna go in with is primer. This is the Studio Fix Mattifying 12 Hour Shine Control Primer. The great thing about this primer is that it's really good if you suffer with open pores, maybe you find that you've got a bit of texture, this is the perfect primer to really help to reduce the appearance of pores, to minimize um, any excess oil or shine that happens throughout the day. And that just works really beautifully and is the perfect canvas for makeup application. Now, next I'm gonna go in with foundation. This is MAC's number one best-selling foundation. It's the MAC Studio Fix Fluid. Great for this time of the year if you find that you want a longer lasting foundation that you know stands the test of time. It's a 24 hour long wear foundation. It just applies beautifully. You can just see how evenly it goes into the skin without looking too heavy. Does it look like I'm wearing makeup? because it just melts in seamlessly. But again, you can really customize it to how you want it to be on the skin. Now next I'm gonna go in with the Pro Long Wear Concealer. Now I love this because it really does give you that crease-proof coverage, but it's also incredibly long lasting. And the finish of it is really lovely and smooth. Now it's great to use for a multitude of things, whether it be concealing under eye darkness, Maybe that you find your under eyes have a little bit more discoloration that you want to kind of even out. It's really, really good at that. I mean, look at the difference just by me applying that under the eye. If you have any pigmentation, maybe around the chin or around the mouth um, or the nose area, you can even use it to kind of conceal those areas. Next, I'm gonna go in one of my favorite powders. This is the MAC Mineralized Powder. I absolutely love this powder because it has some paralyzed pigments that allow your complexion to look really lovely and luminous even though it's set in your makeup. So unlike other powders that can leave you looking quite flat, this gives your skin dimension. It's very nice because it's very, very soft um, and it's like a nice sort of baked powder that kind of blends in really beautifully into your skin without looking too heavy and taking away that gorgeous coverage. How gorgeous is this blush? It definitely screams spring, summer. These are the Glow Play blushes from MAC Cosmetics and they are absolutely stunning. Again, you can apply them with your brush or fingers, but it just gives that really beautiful pop of color just on the cheeks and it's got this really innovative bouncy formulation um, that looks like skin but just goes on absolutely flawlessly and you can build up this blush so you can do more of a sheer application or you can build up to something that's a little bit more of a medium application but oh my gosh I love this and I'm gonna go in with the MAC eyebrow styler and what I love about this is that it's a self propelling and self sharpening pencil so it's great because you don't have to worry about sharpening it and it's going to give you really flawless application to define your brows as well it's also great because it gives you 12 hour wear and it's super long lasting so what you want to do is just go in and fill in the brow hairs and using a very sort of light hand with the application 
as I'm doing. But it's also got, which I absolutely love, and I always tend to kind of buy eyebrow pencils that have this, is a spoolie. Now what a spoolie allows you to do is obviously brush out any excess product that you put in there. If you find that you put too much, you can also go in with the spoolie first of all, just to kind of brush up the brow hair so you can see where the gaps are and then go straight in with your eyebrow pencil. But I just love this, super easy to use. Look at that, that literally took me seconds and it's given me really beautiful, flawless and defined brows that will stay in place all day. And now to the new Max Sack Mascara, the Mega Brush Formula. Now, if you look at the brush, it's incredible. You can see that there. I'm a real fan of these kind of brushes because I really feel like it allows you to go right in between the lashes and redefine. This is gonna give you infinite volume from the first swipe. And the great thing about the Max Sack Mascara is that you can go in with as many layers as you want and it's never gonna clump. It's gonna give you really, really great volume. It allows you to kind of build and customize your lashes, which I think we all want. So let's go straight in and try. And I think it'll be good for someone like me because I, like you guys know, do not have any lashes at all. But I'm gonna pop that on. And again, you can just see, like I'm going in with layer upon layer. And it's a great mascara that you can use on your lower lashes as well. Because I think it's important to do your lower lashes to get that balance. Okay, so guys, you can really see what the hype is about with this mascara. So this is me without anything on my eyes. And look at that. Separation, definition, volume, no clumping, and just infinite volume. I'm gonna go into this really beautiful bold lip. I'm gonna start off by going in with the MAC Lip Pencils. Now these are fantastic. They've got a really lovely, smooth, creamy formula, and they're great. I actually fill in my whole lip with my lip liner, first of all, to create a really lovely base, and then I go in with my lipstick. So this is a really lovely shade, lovely red. Look how creamy it is and how easily it applies. And then I'm gonna define the top part, just to give my lips some definition. And already that looks incredible. There's something about a red lip or a bold lip that just makes you feel like you've entered a new season. And now I'm gonna finish off with this beautiful shade of red from MAC Cosmetics. This is part of the Powder Kiss range. I'm gonna apply it and what I love is that it's gonna give you this really beautiful application that's super long lasting. Oh my God, look how stunning that is. So it gives you the feel of a balm but the long lasting finish a matte lipstick. I love MAC lipsticks, they're so iconic. Again, they're super long lasting. And I love this formulation that you can have the best of both worlds, that really lovely cushioned feel of a nourishing lipstick, that longevity of a matte lipstick that stands the test of time. Definitely check out the MAC lipsticks, they are absolutely divine. And I hope that you guys have loved me creating this really beautiful makeup look using one of my favorite makeup brands, MAC Cosmetics. There's so many amazing products to choose from. I've used some of my favorites. These are some of the best loved makeup products from MAC Cosmetics. Let me know what you guys think. What are you going to be trying? And I can't wait to see you guys soon in the next video. Take care and I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Thanks so much, Adiola. That mascara does look insane. After last weekend's glimpse of the sunshine, we've got spring firmly on the brain. And what better to put us in the mood than some seasonal food? Summer is here with a delicious spring tart, so get ready for that mouth to water. Hi, I'm Summer, and today I'm gonna to share my rustic spring tart with all the veg and loads of herbs. This is one of those recipes that's really versatile, so you can just use whatever's left in your fridge or your favorite herbs and vegetables. I'm gonna show you my take on that. Uh, the first thing you want to do is pop your oven on to 160, and then we're gonna get started with the pastry. So let's go. So the pastry is quite simple. There's only three ingredients. You just need some flour, plain flour, some butter, and some chilled water. You also need a processor. I'm gonna cheat a little bit and I'm gonna use my Magic Expert Cook. So if you're using a food processor, you would just add your flour, like that, and the butter. I'm gonna add all the ingredients now. I'm gonna pop my lid on. Like that, 
and we're ready to go. I'm just gonna set this for five minutes. So we'll get back to the pastry in a minute. But what you're gonna need is a tin that's been greased and lined. I've just lined the bottom of it. Pop the flour on my ball so that we can just work the pastry. I don't need to do much to this really. I just wanna get it into kind of a shape like this, like an oval shape. And then I'm just gonna pop that into a bowl and I'm gonna cover that with a tea towel. And I'm just gonna let that rest in the fridge for about 30 minutes. Okay, so we're gonna start with the veg. I'm using today, I'm gonna to use some asparagus. I've got some spring onions. I've got some snow peas, which I love. I've got some baby spinach and some purple onion. So I'm just gonna cut these up. I'm gonna start with the asparagus. I'm gonna just chop the ends up like so. Slice them up like this. So I'm leaving them quite long because they will look really nice in the tart. The snow peas, I'm just going to again slice them, anything like this. There's no rules to chopping. We're gonna stir fry them with a bit of garlic and seasoning. And then we're going to make the filling and we're gonna load it all into our tray that we're making. I'd say about four spring onions. Again, chop the edges off and then just roughly chop those. And as I said, we're going to add some baby spinach. Right, I'm gonna use some red onions. I'm gonna chop up two. I might not need all of them, but I really love the colors. Cut these into some small pieces. Just going to smash some garlic like so. Just chop the ends off. The herbs I'm going to use today, I'm thinking just a handful of herbs, so I'm thinking a little bit of dill, some parsley, a handful of chives, I love chives, and some tarragon. With the tarragon, I'm just going to take the leaves off. I'm just going to roughly chop all this up. So, right, so we're going to fry our veggies and herbs up. I'm just going to turn on the heat and I'm going to add some olive oil to the pan. And to that, I'm going to add some garlic. And to that, I'm going to add the onion, followed by the veg and all the herbs. So let's get that in. I'm going to do that for a couple of minutes until it becomes a little bit more opaque. And then I'm just going to add the greens, the spring onions. At this point, I'm going to season. It's going to give it a nice stir just to get all the flavours through. Okay, so when the vegetables have got um, slightly brown, we're going to add the herbs, all those beautiful herbs, and the baby spinach. Might just add some pepper to that now. Okay, that is ready. The Flavors. I can smell the herbs and it's once the uh, aromas are releasing, that's when we're ready. Okay, so we're going to make the egg filling and we're going to start off with five to six eggs in a bowl. And we're just going to give that a little whisk. To that, we're going to add milk and cream. You can either use double cream or single cream just for the extra richness. We're going to put all the measurements below. If you don't want to use um, double cream, you can just substitute for milk. Right, let's pour this in. And put the cream in. I'm just going to mix that all together. At this point, I would add some seasoning as well. So you want it to taste really good. Some pepper. And just whisk it till it's all, see the yolks all mixed in and you've got this nice golden color. So my pastry's been in the fridge for about 30 minutes and it's now uh, a lot more firmer and easy to work with. I've always put a bit of flour on your board or your table worktop. I like to cover my rolling pin as well with a bit of uh, flour, just so it doesn't stick. And we are just gonna start rolling this out. 
and I'm going to flip it over. I'm just going to continue rolling. I'm just going to bring these edges in because I don't want it too thin. So you just do this until you get the right thickness. And we're not going to be too precious about this, as I said, it's rustic. Um, I'm going to just flip that back and I'm going to now lay this over my tray like this. I just want to let it hang. And then you just sort of like gently push the edges in and hold up the top so it just sort of falls in like that. You want overhang because as it cooks, it will kind of shrivel up a little bit on the sides. I'm going to cut some of this overhang off. As you can see, just like that. After this, you want to just poke some holes in the bottom. Then you're going to get a baking sheet and you're going to put this on top. You're just going to carefully put that in like so. And then we're going to add these baking clay balls and we're going to add this to the tray. So you're just going to put them in so that holds the shape. And if you want, and to make it a little bit more decorative, you can go like this with your fork around the edges so that you get a nice little pattern. Or you can just leave it as it is. I'm gonna do a little fork pattern. And then that's gonna go into the oven. Okay, so this has been in the oven for 20 minutes now. At this stage, you can see it's starting to go a little bit brown, but we want it to brown up more. And I'm just going to remove the cooking beef. Butter this now, just on the sides with our mixture that we made earlier just to help with the browning process. Okay, now we're going to pop that back in the oven for another 10 to 12 minutes until it gets nice and crispy, and then we're gonna put the filling in. Okay, so it's been in there for like 10, about 12 minutes, and as you can see, it's nice and golden, which is exactly what we want. Now we're ready to start filling. So I've got my herbs from earlier, as you can see, and I'm gonna start putting them into the base. Fill that right up. The more you have in there, the better, I think. So to this, I'm gonna add feta cheese. I'm just gonna make crumb, put crumbs all over the top. Uh, you could use goat's cheese as well. It just depends what you fancy, really. Now we just need to add our egg mixture. You might just wanna give it a little bit of a stir. And we are gonna pour that in slowly. Like that, until it reaches the top. Overfill, that is perfect. Stage as well, this is where you can just trim off the sides. So um, you can just trim off there. That can go around there. Okay, so that's I've trimmed, trimmed all the edges off, and that is now ready to be popped into the oven. This is probably going to take about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven. Okay, so that's been cooking for 40 minutes and it's looking beautiful and golden brown, as you can see there. Um, I've let it sit for 30 minutes just so it's cool to touch. As you can see, it's firm, that means it's ready. I would serve a salad and with a sprinkling of herbs over the top, that fresh spring look. And I think that would be gorgeous for any lunch or brunch. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that and feel inspired to get cooking. All the recipe details will be below at Sheer Lux, and I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, bye. Happy Easter, Georgie. Can I just need a packet of mini eggs? <laughs> and we can all chase after you. Stop hopping. Hop in the bunnies, hop, hop, hop. Great, right. how do you feel? That blows my mind. You can see it. it. Oh, you guys! Oh, you guys! Where did you get it from? I don't know. Oh, God. Tiger! You got that one a bit wrong. Yes. yes. How's it taste? It's my favourite. People who don't like it are missing out. Oh, you can wow. smell the truffle, Rick. Pappardelle with ragu. That's lovely. Cheers. Yeah, my favourite so far. Scallops. Addo. As a fish and chips. So, where are we? At the Aubrey. These are the Lou earrings. It's named after who? After yours truly. Kind of necklace, which is just unbelievable. The Kelly ring. More of a basket weave shape. The Olivia Von Hal. Holt Guyer Hills. Ola Johnson dress. And Paris, Texas beans. Lisa Pento. What are you wearing today? Jacqueline blouse. Jeans. Prada heels. What are you going to do now? 
to head back in. Great. Well, have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank I'll see you, you later. Thank you so much, Summer. The ingredients are all listed in the show's notes below. Enjoy. Now, Manifestation is having a real moment with some of the world's most successful people claiming it's their su secret to success. I am now joined by Giselle Lapont moore dubbed the woman redefining spirituality for the millennial crowd. An expert in tarot, manifesting, and Reiki, she has a new book out called Take It In, in which her aim is to make spirituality accessible and part of the everyday, whatever method you would like to use. Whether that's meditation, manifesting, lunar magic, religion, or just journaling. All different journeys to the same destination, living your best damn life. Welcome, Giselle. It's lovely Hi. to have you here. That's so glad to be here. That's quite a, I think it was Vogue magazine that said yes. you were redefining spirituality. I mean, that's pretty that's a fantastic. Big, big title to live up to. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations Thank on the you. book. I believe it's out this week. Yes, out now, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so... We've all heard so much about manifesting. Mm. I don't think all of us really know what, what it is. Yeah. But I know you in your book you aim to simplify it. Mm -hmm. So could you tell me, for all us yeah. people out there that have no clue, what is manifesting? Yes, yeah, so, I mean, contrary to popular belief, it didn't originate on Instagram or TikTok. Um, <laughs> no. But it's been around, unfortunately. <laughs> it's been around for like thousands of years. And I think something that has such a huge heritage, it's just time to redefine it and to okay. make it work for modern life. But the idea is that your thoughts attract things, that you can attract and visualize what it is that you want and it will happen. Mm -hmm. And it sounds a bit like magic and hocus pocus, but it really is just like proof that our minds are incredibly powerful if we choose to harness the power of it. It's, I, is it a bit like they say if, you, if you're around negative people, your thoughts are negative. If you're uh, around positive people, you're a yeah, more positive think, person. Yeah, and I think just like when we focus our attention on something, things just tend to happen. Right. And okay. we don't really have, um, I guess, like the impetus to do that, right? So we're always thinking about the next thing that we can do and move towards. If we just stop still and say, actually, I really want this thing. If mm -hmm. I just spend time with it, work out how it makes me feel, then yeah. maybe it can happen. And I think it's just on this idea that we're all connected like all of us we yeah. can feel people's like sadness when there's like a war happening so it's just such proof that we are so interconnected so the mm -hmm. things that we do want from life we can probably make happen for us now how, but so if like in our everyday life um how would we actually go about mm -hmm. doing uh, setting out things mm -hmm. to manifest or uh that would work like for instance as a busy mom or mm -hmm. uh as someone that has a crazy job what could we do what skills could we put into our lives to to manifest <laughs> yeah I think we always go to well like I'm gonna go and ask for something tomorrow yeah and I think so much of the work around manifesting is working out what you actually want mm -hmm. so I think that requires two things just like pauses throughout the day and a pause can be 30 seconds a hand on your heart and just saying what's going on right now mm -hmm. I think we're just always in our heads always moving really quickly and it could just be on the train to a meeting or on a car to a meeting just pause and you're like, oh my God, like I'm really frantic today. Yeah. Can I just take a few breaths or can I just repeat an affirmation or just do something to help me get out of it mm -hmm. and come into myself? And then I think the next thing is just finding these little moments of joy and just living life. I think so much of us working at what we do want is a result of just being in the world. Mm -hmm. So if you're at home all the time, then how can you work out if you like dancing, for example? Or if you want to move to Lisbon, have you been to Lisbon yet? So I think <laughs> so much of it is just pausing, inquiring, checking in with yourself and just living a human life. That's why we're here. And you talk a lot about inner, the inner work mm. that we have to do. So there's no point, I believe you're saying, in manifesting something when you haven't gotten over other parts of your life or maybe past traumas that are mm. hindering you from doing that. Yeah. So how would someone maybe that is dealing with things that they mm. don't want to deal with, what could they do to, I guess, understand better mm. the person they are? Yeah, I think it's just having self-awareness. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes we believe that we are the things that we're carrying. So we say things like, oh, I'm just like a really negative person or yeah. I can't do this. And it's like, you're not any of those things. You're just carrying them around with you. So if we can work out, well, what am I actually carrying? And you yeah. might write a quick list of, so I have a fear of rejection. An ex told me that I just wasn't good enough for so something that I'm carrying around with me. I was bullied at childhood and all these things that we carry. Just working out what they are, we can then work out, well, is that actually true? So yeah. even if someone told you that you're not good enough, that's their version of you. It's not your version of yourself. So I think just like knowing that so much of what we carry just isn't actually true. Mm -hmm. They're just stuff that we've created um, and thought of. 
And also just being aware of just like living a life outside of just like the doubts and fears can also contribute to that. Yeah. So if you grew up with like no money, then money will always be hard for you to manifest. And just like not knowing that means you're not blaming yourself if you find manifesting really difficult. I know uh, you, I know you're, as a, I read your, tra you deal with trauma meditation. Yes. Is that, so what is that? Because I thought that was interesting. Mm. Is that people that have suffered trauma, you teach them to meditate mm past that or so it's just actually for all of us yeah. because i think there's like a stat that's like 90 percent of us have experienced some kind of trauma in our lives okay. whether it's a really small one or a big one so this doesn't feel different to people doing the meditation it's just making sure that everyone feels safe during the meditation okay and i think as the practice gains in prominence we're seeing just like you know on youtube and instagram live just like yeah close your eyes imagine a forest yeah and we can feel really unsafe um so the practice is just designed to make sure that everyone feels safe during a meditation practice I mean, I think I, I, I've always wanted to get into meditation. Mm. I find it hard. Yeah. Is there any pointers you could give us? To, because we do always think if we can't do it for 10 minutes, we're failing. Yeah. So is there anything you could, uh, pointers that you have to get us on the right track for meditation? Yeah, I think the assumption is like, I can't think. I'm like, but you're a human being. You yeah. can't just <laughs> stop thinking. Yeah. So I think just knowing as soon as you get into the practice that when a thought comes in, just like mm -hmm. move it to something else. Okay. So if you start thinking, okay, I've got a shopping list to do, I need to feed my kids when I get home, then just go back to your breath. So the point is that whenever something comes in, you start breathing or you place a hand on your heart, just like something to take you away from the right. thought. So it it's completely true, yeah. fine if you're thinking constantly. <laughs> I think that's my thing. I yeah. always think, oh God, I'm not meditating. I'm thinking of it and I feel guilty then as yeah. if I'm not doing it correctly. Yeah, like no one's watching you. So like no one knows if you're doing it right <laughs> yeah. or wrong. There's no right or wrong. It's just you taking time just to be with yourself. Now, what about the journaling, mm. um, which is also something, again, we don't always have time in the morning. Yeah. Um, is, is that something you can do? You can do it throughout the day, I'm guessing. And it's For your sure. feelings, you're just writing down. Yeah, it just feels like we have a mind dump. I think when yeah. we like go into bed and we have so many things in our head of what to do, what we're thinking, what we're really stressed about, yeah. you just put them on a piece of paper. So I just mm -hmm. call like the page, like your best friend that you can like vent to and she won't answer back. Yeah. And you just keep writing until you just feel a bit clearer. And that can be on the notes in your phone on the train. It doesn't have to be like a beautiful journal or like a really long practice. It can yeah. be really simple, just like jotting things that you just hate or are really annoyed about. Yeah. And then another thing you say is um, you believe that the first step in successfully man manifesting is recognizing the beliefs, doubts and fears that are blocking you from creating the life you want. Mm. Do you think, it's, I mean, I would think we all have it a little, we all find it hard to be our authentic selves. Mm. Wouldn't that involve just being incredibly honest mm. with yourself? Like, so how could someone go about, because yeah, you must be quite scared. People are quite scared to be yeah. that honest. So what would you do in that situation? Yeah, I think it's just working out, like, who are you underneath who you think you should be? Yeah. So I guess like the world has ideas of like, you know, what women should look like and what we should wear and what we should mm -hmm. do, what we should think. Yeah. And I think the question really is, well, who are you underneath that? So what do you believe in? What do you like doing? And where are we acting because we're afraid if people will like us or not? Yeah. Are we afraid of like taking up too much space in the world? So we play really small. And I think so often that I don't believe that we're blocked in manifesting. I just believe that there's things in the way of us seeing how great and bold our lives could be. So okay. I think the honesty really is, okay, so I know what stuff I'm carrying. I know that if I look at and work through that, then yeah, there's so much more that I can have access to here. Now, I know you also said you didn't want people that weren't into like tarot mm. or spirituality. You didn't want them to be scared off about the book. Yeah. But I am mm. very interested in tarot. So yeah. can, uh, how does that come into like what you do? What mm. do you use the tarot for? So I don't, unfortunately, fortune tell um, <laughs> or predict because I just think it's not really helpful. Yeah. Because even if I said to you, okay, well, you will be a millionaire in two years time. Yeah. We can't guarantee that. Like the world will change by then. You will change by then. Mm -hmm. So we can predict things, but we're not allowing you to have free will to okay. determine, do I actually want that. I mean, we want a million pounds, but <laughs> if it's like a car or something, like you might not want that car in two years' time. Right. Okay. So I think for me, it's just like giving power back to my clients, and we're just working through well, what are you carrying that you can't really see right now. Mm -hmm. So the cards are really helpful at us working out what's in the way of yeah, me living my best life. Yeah. So something might be, oh well, I'm actually really afraid that people won't love me or like me. So the cards will tell us that, and we can work out, okay, well, how can we move through that? Mm -hmm. It's like yeah, you can be more confident, or ask for that promotion at work, or to just enjoy being around your friends a bit more. Yeah, I love that when you say give the power back because mm. that's what it's all about. Well, listen, Giselle, this was such a great chat Thank and I know you. we're all going to keep you here for probably another hour <laughs> <laughs> to discuss it more. 
Thank you. Thaisa, thank you so much. That was so fascinating. Your book, Take It In, will be linked in the show notes below for more manifestation inspo. And please follow Giselle at Giselle LPM. So that's it for today. Thank you so much to Summer, Adiola, Laura, Polly, and Sherry, of course. On the next show, we have a wedding special from glowing bridal beauty with Hannah Martin to gorgeous bridesmaids fashion to an amazing shoe haul. If you are planning a wedding this year or know someone who is, you won't want to miss it. In the meantime, we would love it if you could comment below, give us a thumbs up and do subscribe if you haven't yet. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Goodbye.